Hi everyone, welcome to Friday Fun. Today we have a great topic. We're going to talk about harlequin bugs. And if you remember, we talked about the bladder pod bush just a couple weeks ago when we were talking about bees. So as you come in on the main path, you'll pass the big sign and there's a bladder pod right next to it and a huge area of the bladder pod bush here and all the way here. And if you continue down the pathway, maybe another 30 or 40 feet, there's another one. And then maybe another 20 feet, there's another one. And then another one after that. So here we are at the bladder pod bush to look for some harlequin bugs. But first I wanna tell you a little bit about the bladder pod. It's called a bladder pod because of these puffy seed pods. Inside is where the seeds grow. So we have the seed pod here and it's filled with a lot of air and the seeds are still growing it's still green but there they are they're inside and as they get ripe then they will get bigger and the pod will turn light brown and the seeds will turn sometimes white and sometimes dark brown and they'll be quite a bit bigger than those then they'll fall to the ground and they'll pop open and maybe grow a new ladder pod plant but before you can get a pod you have to have flowers so first you have these beautiful yellow flowers and the pollinators, the bees and the hummingbirds will come to these flowers and they'll touch a little bit of the pollen and they'll pollinate the flower. Once the flower is pollinated, then the seed pod will start to form. So here's a flower that's just starting its seed pod. See that little darker area coming out? It's just small now and it'll blow up like a balloon and turn green and the seeds will start to grow inside. We're here to look at harlequin bugs. So here's one right on top. And if we look carefully, there's some others down inside the plant that are crawling around. Maybe if I walk around to the other side, we can see if we can get them to move just a little bit. There's one here and there's one down here. There's two down here. There's one over here. There's a lot of harlequin bugs all together. Here's a harlequin bug that we can zoom in on. There it is, it has some nice sunlight and I can make it even bigger. Look at him moving around. See that shield, you can see those two white eye spots and the antennas. touched the branch and now he just hid. Pretty fun. Climbing down. So more things I want to know about harlequin bugs is they're actually stink bugs. They have the ability to put out some stinky spray to ward off predators. So there's someone that's going to try to eat them, and there are not too many that will because they've learned the harlequin bug can stink them. And if you look at the harlequin bug, you'll see it has bright colors. The orange color against the black and the little bit of white, we call those warning colors. Warning colors to other animals that we're going to taste terrible or we're going to be poisonous. Another thing about harlequin bugs is they're not beetles. We think about other things as being beetles. These are, beetles are chewers. These guys actually have a sucking mouth part and it sits right in between their front legs. It's like a straw and it folds right under there and it only comes open when they want to drink. Harlequin bugs are so cool. This group is resting on this leaf. Look, I found some eggs and they're super small and you have to look very, very carefully. And we'll get a bit closer and I'll see if I can get them in my shot. There'll be two rows of six eggs each. Those are so pretty. I'm gonna take some eggs into the classroom and we're gonna look at them under the microscope. I found some others that were on like a little branch. Usually we do find them on the back side of a leaf but sometimes we'll find them right on the stems. I found some eggs under this leaf that are hatching. 
the baby harlequin bugs are right here in the top. Those are hatchlings, new ones, and they're already starting to get some color. When they first came out of the egg, they looked just kind of more yellow. So they have to get a little more color before they can wander off and start their lives. They're so small and so cute. Let's keep looking and see what else we can find. Look what I found. I found another little harlequin bug. This one is really small. This one is not quite as small as a new hatchling, but it's tiny. Maybe it's already molted once. They have to go through five molts in order to be an adult. So maybe, maybe this one's on its way. This is really cute. This is really small. I'll put it back on the flower where I found it. This one is a little bit older. Colors are just a little bit different and it's still a bit rounder. Doesn't have a shield yet. This one I'll call him a teenager. Maybe his next molt he'll turn into an adult. And when they take off their shell for the final time, they become an adult. And you can see how it looks different. You can see that shield or V-shape on the back. And now it has wings and it can fly. So we stopped at this bladder pod bush because I noticed something other than harlequin bugs. This one is loaded with spittle bugs. If we look over here, we can see that white foam, that white foamy stuff. There's insect and sometimes more than one inside. The spittle bug nymph lives in there and the spittle bug makes the foam right out of his body. The foam is super important to protect him. First of all, the birds can't see him, so it's good to hide under it. Secondly, it keeps him moist because it keeps the sun and the wind from drying him. And then it also has some ant repellent in it, so it keeps the ants out. So that's how it protects itself while it's a nymph. Let me take one and open it up for you, and you can see what the spittle bug looks like. The spittle bug, like the harlequin bug, sucks the juices right out of the plant. Did I get them in there? Oh, that's a lot of foam. Nope, maybe still on the plant. There, I can kind of see him. See that little yellow? There's a little yellow under that foam. Black and yellow colored. I'm trying to get him out of there. Now I got him. Let me see. This is a small one. There's the little spittle bug. And I'll put him back on the plant and he'll make some more foam. And he'll get himself reestablished. So once he grows bigger, he has to molt too. He has to take off his shell and keep getting bigger. And on his final molt, he'll have wings and fly away. So now we've had a good look at the bladder pod and some of the harlequin bugs and some of the spittle bugs. Now we're going to head back into the nature center for our story. And I'm going to do a little felt board to show you the anatomy of the harlequin bug. We came back here in the classroom and we're over here in the discovery zone of the classroom. And here's a big word, invertebrates. And that means that they don't have a backbone because our backbone, each particular bone is called a vertebrate. So if you have invertebrates, you have no vertebrate. Invertebrates are typically quite small, like worms, they don't have a backbone. Or some crustaceans and some insects, they have their they don't have any bones on the inside, but they have their shell on the outside, and that's their skeleton. So today we're talking about harlequin bugs, and harlequin bugs are an insect, and they have their shell on the outside. Their shell on the outside of every leg, even on the outside of their antenna, their head, every part. So the harlequin bug is an insect, which means it has six legs. Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six and two antennas, one, two. So their entire body is covered with an exoskeleton. And what's really interesting is that they can fly when they're an adult and their flying wings are hiding underneath the cover wings. These are protecting them. And the cover wing has got color for part of it and then part of it is clear so you can actually see the flying wing underneath. So on our harlequin bug, all insects have three body parts. They have a head, and the middle section is called the thorax, and the bottom section is called the abdomen. So on the head, we always have antennas, 
And we have eyes. Now in the harlequin bug, these white areas are not really their eyes. Their eyes are black and they sit right on the edges. So they have antennas and eyes and a mouth part. And on the harlequin bug, the mouth part is a straw and it sucks the juices right out of the plant. And while it's not being used, it lays underneath in between their front legs. So he's got his head with his eyes, his antennas, and his mouth part. And then they got the six legs. We already counted those. And the legs are all attached to the center. They're all attached to the thorax. And the thorax is where the wings are attached also. But the harlequin bug has this extra piece. And we're going to call that the shoulders. And then they have this piece too. And this piece, we're going to call this the shield. And then we talked about the wing covers. And we talked about the flying wings that show underneath. So there's your harlequin bug. Now we're going to put it back together. So we have the flying wings underneath and the wing covers on both sides that show a little bit of the flying wings underneath. And then we have the shield that's in between. Oops. And then we have the shoulders and then we have the head. We've got the eyes and the mouth part. And what else do we need on the head? The two antennas. So let's bring down the antennas. And now we need all the legs. Now there's never a leg coming out of the head. The legs always come out of the middle section. They always come out of the thorax. So the two smaller ones are at the top. And then the two medium ones are kind of in the middle. And the two bigger ones are at the bottom. Now they never come out of the bottom either. They only come out of the middle because the thorax is where all the legs and wings come from. Now we're going to look closer at some eggs and some harlequin bugs. Here are the harlequin bug eggs. I put them under the microscope, but I found I could actually see them better with the camera on the telephoto. The little circles of white and black on the top and little bands around the sides and if we look really carefully there are tiny little dots so here we have some eggs that have already hatched you can see how they've kind of already busted out that's pretty cool these are older and here are some harlequin bugs I'm going to use the light from the microscope to show you the different sizes that they come. So here we have the adult female in the middle and then the teenager right above her and trying to escape is one that's probably more like before a teenager. And then there's even one little small one and there's even one size smaller right after they hatch out of the eggs. They don't fight. They're just talking to each other. Oh, he's going to climb right on top of him. That's pretty funny. They want to crawl out. They want to escape. So I tried to put them under the microscope and looking through the lens was just a bit harder. I could do a good job just with the telephoto. You can really see the beautiful colors and those little eye marks. They're not, those little white spots are not the actual eye, but they're, they're close to the eyes and those antennas are working hard to find a way out. So now we're going to do our story. And harlequin bugs are near and dear to my heart because I wrote a book about them. And the book I wrote is called Harley the Harlequin Bug. It's happening today as it happens a great many days here in the Madrona Marsh Preserve. The harlequin bug eggs are hatching. Look closely. The eggs are under the leaf of the bladder pod bush. From 12 tiny barrel-shaped eggs will come 12 tiny baby bugs called nymphs. The proud mother watches as the eggs hatch. She wants what all mothers want for their, ch their children. She wants them to grow up in a nice, safe place where there is always plenty to eat. Uh -huh. 
As they hatch, she gives each of them a name that starts with the letter H. The new brothers and sisters are Haley, Holly, Henry, Herbert, Helga, Heidi, Harper, Harry, Hope, Heather, Hans, and lastly, Harley. All of the harlequin bug nymphs start sucking juices from the leaves and pods of the bladder pod bush. That is, everyone except Harley. Harley, you need to eat, encourages his mother. Oh, Mom, I don't like the way it smells. I want something different, whines Harley. Harlequin bugs need plants with strong smells. We need to collect those chemicals from the plants to use for our protection, she explains. A bird won't want to eat you or a snack if you taste yucky. Now eat up, his mother tells him. This is your only choice while you are a nymph. And besides, it's delicious. Looking around, Harley sees everyone is enjoying the bladder pod juices. Okay, sighs Harley. I guess I am hungry. So plugging his nose, Harley sticks his straw-like mouth into a pod and starts drinking. Harley, like all harlequin bugs, has a hard shell called an exoskeleton. As he eats and grows, his shell becomes too tight. And after five days of eating, his mother says to him, You've outgrown your shell. Now you need to molt. Molt? What's that? asks Harley. It means you will need to shed your shell and grow a bigger one today, she says. After molting, Harley sees his new shell is more colorful, and he's beginning to grow tiny wings. Can I fly now? he asks his mother. Oh no, Harley. You will need to grow and molt a total of five times before you can fly. Each time you molt, your wings will grow a little bit bigger. After your final molt, you will be an adult, and your wings will be big enough to fly, explains his mother. When I'm an adult, I want to fly away and find some food that smells wonderful, he tells her. That evening, Harley listens to Uncle Horatio tell a story about sweet alyssum flowers. Yum! They taste delicious and smell sweet, says Uncle Horatio. The next morning, Harley sets out to find his mother. Mom, I want to find some sweet alyssum, he tells her. Uncle Horatio knows where they are outside the preserve, and they smell sweet. Sweet smelling? Are you sure? She questions. Harley, there are many dangers outside the preserve for a little bug. That day, Harley begins eating as much as possible. I want to grow quickly, he tells everyone. I want to get my wings and fly away and find the sweet alyssum flowers. Harley was so busy eating, he didn't even notice he wasn't holding his nose anymore. Today, Harley is molting for the final time, once again leaving his old shell behind. As before, it'll take some time for his new exoskeleton to dry and get its true colors. I can't wait to fly, he says excitedly. How much longer will it take until my wings are ready? Oh, an hour later, Harley is ready to test his wings. Harley now has hard wing covers and delicate flying wings underneath. I'm ready to fly, he beams. I'm an adult. You can see the little flying wings showing underneath. Before beginning his journey to the sweet alyssum, Harley needs to find his Uncle Horatio. Uncle, it's me, Harley, he shouts. Wow, I almost didn't recognize you. You're all grown up, says his uncle. Yes, and I'm ready to find the sweet alyssum flowers. Please tell me how to get there. Now, Harley, it'll be an all-day adventure to find the flowers. You will face some real dangers along the way, his uncle tells him. You will need to fly from plant to plant, resting after each flight. And when you get to the fence that surrounds the preserve, you'll have to cross a busy road with fast-moving cars and blowing wind. Once you've crossed the road, you'll need to fly over a tall wall to find the sweet alyssum. I'll leave first thing in the morning, Harley declares. Oh, Harley, there's one more danger, warns his uncle. There can be poisons on the flowers. Please be careful. 
Now Harley needs to practice flying. So he stretches out his wings and starts to flap. Early the next morning, after a good breakfast, Harley is ready for his journey. His proud mother watches while his uncle Horatio points him in the right direction. His mother and his uncle wish him a safe journey and say goodbye. Harley starts his journey with a short flight to the nearest plant, and he flies farther on the second flight and even farther on the third. Flying is fun, he shouts with excitement. Oh, it must be great to be a bird. The afternoon winds begin to blow, and Harley needs to land and rest. There, he meets the most beautiful girl harlequin bug he's ever seen. Hello, my name is Harley, he says. Hi, Harley. My name is Hildegard, but please call me Hildy because I don't like my full name, she answers. You look tired, she adds. Yes, I am tired and hungry, he sighs. I'm on a journey to find the sweet alyssum flowers. Would you like to stay and rest? Hildy invites him. I guess I could continue my journey tomorrow. Flying in this wind is very difficult, he replies. Let's get something to eat, Hildy suggests. That's a great idea. I'm starved, says Harley. Harley tells her all about his journey, especially the dangerous cars and the poisons. Look over there through the fence, Hildy points. Those are the cars. See how fast they move? Wow, they do look dangerous, says Harley. And Harley, I have heard about the poisons too, Hildy says with a worried look. Poisons kill insects like us. Luckily, there are no poisons here in the preserve. Let's get some dinner. Together, they enjoy a wonderful dinner, drinking from the bladder pod bush. Ah, this is delicious, Harley tells her. Does it taste different from the bladder pod bush where you come from, she asks. No, but it tastes so much better with you, he replies. Hildy? You should have a name to match your beauty. Can I call you Sweet Alyssum? Harley asks. Oh, yes. I love that name. She happily agrees. Oh, look, Harley. The raccoons are coming out. It's almost dark. And night is a very bad time to fly. I think you should stay here, says Sweet Alyssum. Thank you, replies Harley. I think I will. The next morning, Harley wakes up looking into Sweet Alyssum's beautiful eyes. Harley, please stay here and start a family with me, she proposes. The bladder pod bush is a perfect place to raise a family. What a wonderful idea, replies Harley. I'm so happy, says Sweet Alyssum. Me too, says Harley. I have spent my whole life dreaming of Sweet Alyssum, and now I have found her. We will have a wonderful life here on the bladder pod. A week later, Sweet Alyssum lays 12 tiny barrel-shaped eggs under the leaf of a bladder pod bush. What shall we name them? asks Harley. We should name each one after a sweet-smelling flower, suggests Sweet, sweet Alyssum. Oh, that's another good idea, says Harley. But we may need some help. Can you think of any sweet-smelling flowers that they can name them? Hmm. Maybe a rose, maybe plumeria, that's one of my favorites. Or maybe some lavender. There's a lot of sweet smelling names they can name their children. And that's our story. Thank you for joining us for Friday Fun. We'll see you next time. Bye.